Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today we come to you from a place where the beer flows like wine and the beautiful women flock like the salmon of Capistrana. A little place called Aspen. That's right, we are at the Continental Divide on the top of the world in the middle of nowhere and we're gonna be running around on the top of the Rocky Mountains all day. So I'm very excited to bring you guys along on this adventure. We are in a beautiful place. We got the dogs, special lady friends, and this beautiful, beautiful adventure ahead of us. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. And so the adventure begins. We parked down at the base of this trailhead and are headed straight up into the Alpine country. As you can see, the trees are starting to get sparse. This is my very first time actually being in this sort of alpine climate, especially out here in the Rocky Mountains. I've never got to come out here and explore. I've been to Colorado a few times, but we are actually going for it this time and actually getting to see some of the most beautiful areas around. I'm with my special lady friend and her brother, Will. So Will knows a lot of these places around here and it's gonna lead us on, on essentially, look at this. We got all my favorite things in one place. We got mushrooms. We got rocks and we got fish and we're having a good day today already. So let's get to looking. Man, there's a lot of cool stuff up here. Well, one thing I will say is it is not hike. Ooh, can't even talk. It's not easy hiking at this elevation. Probably about the highest I've ever been. One of the tallest mountains near me where I live is only about 12,000 feet, 11,000 or so. I'm worried about 13 right now and it's a lot harder to hike. I'm a little more out of shape than I thought I was, but I made it to the top. A super cool lake up here, I've heard. It gets some fish in it, and apparently it has fish in it, so we're almost at the top. I can see the water. And I'm ready to splash my face and cast my rod. Whew, how beautiful though, take a look. Look at where we're at, everyone. Super, super cool. Pretty magical place. Let's get a line wet. Wow, this is so cool. I've never fished in a place like this. Apparently they fly in trout into this lake with airplanes and helicopters and just drop them off. But this is gorgeous. Super clear. How wonderful. Maybe we'll just try to start working it counterclockwise. Maybe, maybe clockwise, counterclockwise. Sounds better. I am hot. Okay. Here goes nothing, everyone. I don't know what to use, but the fish are rolling. I've already been seeing them splishing and splashing over here. Is it? Ooh, they're rolling over there too. Yeah, let's go over here where they're rolling. Yeah. Okay. Here goes nothing, everyone. Got the camera set up. I'm seeing them roll over in here. So I'm gonna sneak over to this bank. Got just a little stimulator fly on. I don't know what's gonna work, but if they're rolling on the surface, it means they're eating something. So that's, that's a good sign. No, it'll stay there. Come on, fishies. Fish, fish, fishy. They're all rolling way out there in the center. Maybe we'll work our way around first. And we'll get, actually, that one just rolled right there on the bank. Like, what the heck? Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, well, what I think I'll do. Maybe even I'll hike up on that little wall there and look down. I'll be able to actually see these fish swimming around. Kind of see them in different areas. So I'm going to start working my way around. There's definitely fish here. Little, get back. There's a huge school of them sitting right here. And I tingled my fly line. I choked. I choked everyone. I know that by snagging my stuff in the trees there, I spooked him. Ah, ah. 
Oh, there's right there. I'm in the fish pen. I've entered the fish pen. Come on. Might have to go lighter leader, different fly. No CM, something small? Yeah. Okay. After that, I'm going sub surf. That's about as small as I got. But I think that'll do it. It looks a little bit, whatever is on the surface out here are these little light colored bugs. Haven't, don't have enough experience here to really understand exactly what they are yet, but this should work for now. After this, I'm going with green leggy bugger. I'm going underwater. This is a really fun part about fly fishing, everyone. Tiny holes and tiny flies. I did it though. But I think this will work. I'm switching to something a little bit smaller. This is more like a caddis. It has a little piece of foam in it so that it can get wet and it still floats really well. And it's a little bit more the size of what we're seeing these fish feed on, so. Let's do it. What do you think, Little? Think we're gonna get one? Oh, got him on the walk, on the walk, on the walk. I got it now. They want a faster presentation. Little no. Oh, I was just walking away. Just bebopping down the trail of my line out there and whamsy, whamskies. And uh, here we are once again, prime example of fly fishing. Absolutely, completely tangled up. Okay, here we go. This thing looks so cool though. Little no, no. Come here, you guys. Wow, this is so pretty. Looks like a brook trout. Look out, no, 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 no. Go, 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 you guys. Holy Christ. Look at how neat this thing is. Easy, easy, easy. Go, go, go. Come on. Look at that thing. <laughs> so cool. The colors on that are incredible. I believe this is a brookie. That that body, that belly of that fish is so neat. Look out, Roxy, go, go, Roxy. Oh wow, just the coolest trout I've ever seen, in one of the most beautiful places I've ever fished. Fly changed, worked well. Okay, Let's let this little guy go. Later, dude. <laughs> All right, everybody, fish number one in Colorado. Oh. But I did a little bit differently on that one, guys. Obviously, I took off walking, going to the next rock down, and was carrying that fly super fast across the, it was subsurface, it wasn't on the surface, but it was moving super quick and that fish actually bit, so that could be the key here. It's just a faster presentation. The fly worked. Those are some nice freaking brookies down there. I think they probably look a little bit bigger because the water's so clear, but. The optical illusion. This one has a tungsten head too, so it's gonna get way down there. Oh, there's another one. Oh my God, we're surrounded. Flipping surrounded. <gasps> Think one's on it. Yep. Oh, he's looking at it. <sighs> Picky little bastard. Oh, he's looking at it. Eat it. <laughs> Shut up, little. Oh, they're swirling on it. There's like four of them following it though. Drop it right on him. Oh, he's got it, come on, eat it, eat it. He wanted it faster. See him? Oh, oh. He's got it. Oh my God, did you see that? Oh, damn it. I thought for sure I waited long enough on that one. I watched him turn away with it. But he wanted it. That one like decided he wanted it and he came all the way for it. Oh, 
Got him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was nice. oh my God, Lola. <laughs> Little shush. <laughs> wow. By far the coolest one. Freed about the same size. But just look at that. I changed that fly up. I had a feeling that thing was gonna work a little more, a little more abstract, brighter color. Wow, those are cool fish. I have never seen something so beautiful. My favorite part has gotta be these blue spots that go through here. They got little orange rings around them. Let's give them a breath. And those bottom fins are just the coolest thing I've ever seen. Look at that dorsal fin too. Just gorgeous. Well, that was worth the walk. Let's let this little guy go. Hi, bud. Shoo. Yeah! Fish number two. Well, I must say, my absolute favorite part of this thing so far is the view. Simply just the view. Where else? hike way up into the alpine country and find trout like that i spent a lot of time in alaska in a lot of like alpine looking areas more like tundra which just kind of replicates but this is a neat experience well worth the walk indeed now it's time to go do some more fun stuff and get some stuff for dinner so comment below if you know what i'm saying there in the meantime enjoy the view Guys, if you like this view, thumbs up this video. Because <laughs> I'll be coming back here already since I've been here a couple days running around. I've been seeing how unique and beautiful this place is. So I'm gonna see some thumbs up and some comments below on whether or not you wanna see me come down to Colorado again. I'm already gonna plan a big trip for next year down here. Um, but let me know where you want me to go, what you wanna see me do. And if there's any special areas that you think would be awesome to film, let me know, because it's day one and I'm blown away. I think we can have some fun in this state. Okay, you guys, we just came down off the side of the mountain. And as we came across this little reservoir dam thing, I looked down and there are hundreds of trout sitting at the base of this thing, right where this fresh water is coming in. So they are very, there, there's been barely any water you can see. And there's a ton of them. I bet I'm looking at a hundred trout right now. And some of them are like up to 20 inches, it looks like. So we're gonna really kind of sneak up behind them. I'm gonna use the same fly. See if we can get us a big fish. Look at how cool this is. I'm gonna stay right here and get low. I'll try to fire a cast in there. There he is! Oh! <laughs> Got a little western on that one. Thought I was still in the lake fishing for brookies. Yanked him. Oh, got him again. Got him again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Second and third cast. Little no. I'm going to sneak down over here. Out of the sight of these fish. I don't want to spook this little school of fish. Oh, wow. It's a beautiful rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. Beautiful. Check that thing out, everyone. Okay, little guy. See you later. Well, that was well worth it. Got our second species of the day in a really, really cool spot. I couldn't believe how many trout were in there, but they got onto us pretty quick. But I can see there's some water below this dam, too. So let's sneak down around, see what else we can find. Looks like there's fish absolutely everywhere in this little creek, so I got a good feeling about this. <laughs> okay, wasn't wrong. You can see the little pool through the trees here. The minute we look down, I can see the fish falling. So I'm sneaking around, trying to be stealthy. I'm gonna toss it in there, see if I can get one. Okay, yeah. here goes nothing. Poor little dudes are probably so hungry. It's not even fair. Yeah! Poor little dudes. There's a ton of them in there. They're a lot smaller. They look like a different speed. Oh, that one's not! Oh, yeah! Woo! Thing came out of nowhere. Smokes only. Nope, no, no, you guys. Nuh uh. 
Not this time. Oh, oh man, that's a good fish. That is a really good one. Beautiful looking rainbow. The thing's almost got like tiger stripes on it. Look at this. Holy smokes. Man, surprisingly enough, the water down at the base of this dam is really cold. This thing's very lively. Look at how pretty that thing is. Wow. Neat trout up here. And all wild. It's the cool part about the Rocky Mountains is a lot of it <clears throat> is just true trout country. Nobody really knows how they got here or why they're here, but there is trout in just about every part of the state and anything that's wet, which is pretty cool for an area because a lot of places you don't have that kind of luck. Well, I think we spooked this hole. Let's get moving. Okay, the hunt is on. We made it into the woods, off the mountainside. And Little's on something. Not sure what it is, but it snows us down. And they're tracking them. But we're looking for chanterelles, and it looks like we already found them. Brother Will, Brother Will's got them. Instant gratification. Nubulars, nubulars. There they are. Perfect little dudes. Now, I do not recommend plucking them, but this one just came out. And, but these are perfect. These make a great meal. And honestly, I'd take them a little dry over too wet because they'll start to go bad. So, now the only one thing left to do, start cutting. Now, it's so crazy to me, because this is the highest that I've ever picked mushrooms. And again, being from Oregon and Washington, it's really hard to find areas where you can get super high up an alpine that's not on a, on a volcano essentially. And so I've never got a chance to pick this high, but right now we're probably nearing 10, 12,000 feet. Um, and so it's so neat to see one of my favorite mushrooms growing in such a crazy place. Now again, we found these on Stay Fishy episodes, but these are golden chanterelles and they pretty much speak for themselves. The main thing about finding a chanterelle, once again- They're actually rainbow chanterelles. Oh, rainbow chanterelles. <laughs> we got, the peanut gallery chimed in and corrected me. What makes them, so they're, is it the color that they come up? Yeah. That's really neat. They look like they're golden. They but don't look actually, like golden. It's, uh, it's, it's a different species. Right, it seems to me almost like a mix between the white chanterelle and the golden. They clump up like some of the white chanterelles uh, that I found, but I've been eating a couple that Will had when we got here already. Um, and they taste a lot like a, like a golden chanterelle as well, but nevertheless, I love the dryness of them too. That's awesome. Hi, buddy. Oh, God, you're a love bug. You're gonna push me down the mountain, crazy nut. Man, this looks perfect in here. Oh boy, I see caps everywhere. I see London, I see France. I see chanterelles on the ground. Oh, oh, oh boy, we got some ticking to do. We got mushrooms, crystals. I'm sure there's gold if we looked hard enough. We are at the end of the rainbow. Bingo. Look at how pretty all these are. These ones really look like they just came up. A lot of times in the high mountains like this in the fall, there's enough moisture just at night with the dew that it'll bring up those mushrooms, those fall mushrooms in particular. So things are looking good. Got probably close to a pound already. Eating good in the neighborhood. Ow! Well, of course, I forgot something. So and something very important that you shouldn't forget when mushroom picking is a knife. So I cut the, I borrowed the knife to cut those last ones, but we're gonna have to improv arrowhead knives. Here we go. <laughs> One more species for the frying pan. Coral mushroom. Beautiful color to it too. And these things get wormy really fast sometimes. This one looks like it just came up. We better eat it. Look at all that color. Very colorful party here today. Well, I'd say we did pretty good. Thank you, Brother Will, for the honey hole. It's time to go cook. Now, I'm sure there's already some comments in the video about these things, but 
I want to see what you guys think of my pink shoes here. A guy's got to do what a guy's got to do, you know? Today, we resorted to pink shoes, but it was lucky. They're the lucky pink shoes now. Hashtag pink shoe. Well, welcome back. But oh, one more, we forgot one more up here. That's Helen Lake. Yep, that's that. And we're back in the kitchen. This is Kanigi's remote kitchen. It's actually McDonald's kitchen, but we have all of our amazing ingredients for a recipe that I've been wanting to make for a long time on this channel. Squid ink linguine with our fresh chanterelles that we just pulled off the mountain. What a cool day it's been. Nevertheless, we found everything we wanted to. We went to a new place and we saw some beautiful, beautiful country. So nothing left to do but start to eat. So let's get cooking. Okay, so first things first, we cleaned up all of our chanterelles. I like to just put them in a little strainer, like a noodle strainer, toss them around in some water, pick all the pine needles and the different bit of dirt off of them, and you have these beautiful things. So our first part of this recipe is gonna start with just these. It's really important if you're gonna use a chanterelle in any sort of recipe. If you're gonna put it on pizza or on top of something, like, like toast or eggs or, or anything like that, you wanna make sure to cook them first. But in this case, because they're gonna be added to our sauce, we wanna make sure to boil off all the water and cook them down before we add them or add any sauce to it or also just create a bunch of water in that dish and it won't taste good at all. You won't have any good flavor. So let's turn this on, get this going. So get these things proper size. I'm gonna just tear these bigger ones up a little bit. I really want that nice meaty bite from these in the linguine, so I'm gonna leave them pretty big. I'm not gonna chop these down really fine and, and make it so you kinda can miss them in the dish. I want those big chunks so I can get that really good chanterelle flavor with each bite and then chunk out my, ultimately, my shrimp that's gonna go in the dish. Rip some of those big ones in half. And you guys will start to see here what's gonna happen and how these are gonna to start to expel a bunch of water and we want that to boil off and then we'll add some of our other ingredients. Look at that one, a little fairyland mushroom. Super cool too, I'm really glad that uh, Brother Will told me that these were rainbow chanterelles because I could see how they really didn't look exactly like the goldens that I'm used to finding or the white chanterelles like we have on the west coast. Uh, but these Colorado mushrooms are a thing of their own because they're closer to the rainbow. And I can almost see that rainbow look to them, so it's kind of cool. New mushroom on the list. Okay, all our water's gone. Our shrimps are starting to stick a little bit. So, must mean it's time for butter. This, this is gonna eventually turn into a sauce here, so I'm gonna add, this doesn't look like that small of an amount of butter, but it's a good start. Because we wanna saute our mushrooms here, we're gonna add a little bit of seasonings. And we're gonna add our shallots, get those nice and brown. And we're gonna add a healthy amount of garlic. Because you can't go wrong with too much garlic, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Ooh, the smells, the smells, the mojo happening in this house right now. Ooh, that's nice. That's real nice. I'm gonna add just, just a skosh of my special seasoning from Idaho Joe's. Thank you, Idaho Joe. On the road trip out here, we stopped at this wonderful place. Great Indian taco. Thank you very much. Now, once this gets a really good brown on it, we're gonna toss in our heavy whipping cream and start to let that all simmer together. Okay, so we deglaze our pan. Get that stuff up off the bottom a little bit. Now I just a splash of white wine before I add the rest of my butter and my heavy whipping cream. Got a nice color to it, great flavor. It's gonna test your food as you eat, excuse me, as you cook. So, next step, hunk of butter. Let that render down a little bit, start to saute. And about, what is this, this is 16 ounces. If it's gonna be making this for two people, say like one small thing of heavy whipping cream is good enough. I've never really tried any soy alternatives or, or uh, nut alternatives to this for making my own Alfredo sauce. Pretty much gotta stick with the heavy whipping cream and butter in my opinion, but I'm sure there are some ways that you could make this a vegan meal or, or something that didn't take so much dairy in it. But tonight we're going with butter and heavy cream. Very low fat, very low sodium. Add that whole thing there. Let that start to do its thing. What's important now to get your heat correct 
You don't want this thing simmering too hard, but you want those bubbles coming up because you want a really nice heat and a nice even boil to that stuff before you put in the rest of your white wine. And then of course, your cheese. You want that stuff to be the perfect temperature so that cheese doesn't start to curdle up and make a really lumpy sauce. We want it to be a nice, smooth, creamy sauce. So we'll let that stuff simmer for a little bit, turn our heat up just a bit, and then dump in some more of our white wine. That's looking really good. And I go just a little bit of Italian season in there. I'm gonna try to go really low salt on this because you really don't need too much of it. Over salting this dish can ruin it all completely. So a little bit more seasoned salt in there. Not much, just a dash. Because there is a lot of salt already in cheese itself, especially when they're making that process. It's basically salt and cream that makes cheese, so. It's looking good. A little crack of pepper. Fancy, fancy. Oh, Victorian. All right, so we have a really good royal going. I'm gonna add about a half glass of wine there for flavor. And then in goes the rest of our dairy, our cheese. And again, you want that nice steady boil before you put that cheese in there or else you will not get a good consistency. There we go. And then start the mixing. Make sure that cheese starts to evenly melt across the pan here. Normally I do this in a pot, but today for you guys, I did it in the pan, which will work really nicely. Kind of evens it out and we have enough space to kind of mix all these ingredients together. So that's looking phenomenal. Got to test it along the way. It's getting there. And I got a really low heat here because I want this to sit and simmer. Once I get that cheese mixed in, I'm going to add my Argentinian red prawns to the sauce. That's going to give it a really nice seafood flavor. Kind of complement that earthy tone from the mushrooms. And then in goes our special ink pasta. I'm excited to try this. Okay, looking pretty creamy there. Looking real good. Lots of natural flavors. Let's go shrimp at a time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, beautiful. Just gonna get those all covered up so they start to cook nicely. And I really do not want my cheese to burn here, so I'm gonna go super low, super low and slow here, because now that these shrimp are in here, I don't wanna mix it too much, I wanna let those cook. It's time to get our noodles in. Just a touch of avocado oil in the water. Make sure we don't get a stick. And here we go. The party's starting. Okay. The sauce is looking so good. And since those shrimp went in there, it almost smells like a chowder in a way. It has a really rich flavor and it has a nice seafood smell to it. But as far away from the ocean as we possibly can be right now. But mm, no reason we can't enjoy the good things. This is not done yet, but Really interesting pasta, kind of mealy. I really like it, it's gonna go well with that creamy sauce. Tastes just like normal pasta, but a little bit more flair on the presentation. And now, it's time for Winnie's salad. Okay, linguine's done. You guys can see this color, it's not from a dye. It's an Italian recipe of pasta where they actually use squid ink to flavor that stuff while they are in the dough, basically. But nevertheless, I'm really excited to try it in this dish. It has an incredible texture, better than almost any linguine or, or spaghetti that I've ever had. So I'm looking forward to getting that sauce on top of that. Let's put it back over here. But one important thing before we put this stuff back on the stove <clears throat> to add our sauce is you wanna make sure to rinse this pasta or else it will get very, very sticky, I've heard. So give it a good rinse, dip it around a little bit, get some of that, the rest of that gluten out of there basically. Let's hold it all together. Better get a good rinse. Wow, that's cool color. Mmm, yum. Kind of looks like a bowl of worms. Pretty worms. Okay, we've Ugh. got these um, microgreens that contain sunflower and pea and alfalfa. And so I'm gonna add some of these. There we go. This is just a really simple dish to accompany the squid ink linguine. And I'm gonna add some avocado. Come on, buddy, open. There we go. 
Aged? Always aged. Okay, salad's made, sauce is done, noodles are perfect. It's time to dish up. It's been a long day of hiking, so I'm going heavy. Going heavy squidding. Maybe put a little bit of that back and wash my figure. I'm gonna go with some of these amazing ingredients. A couple of shrimp, lots of the chanterelles. I went heavy on them because it's the best part of this dish without any question. And it's a flavor that truly only Mother Nature can reproduce. So, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh, guys. The smell of vision was a thing. I say it all the time. Okay, micro green salad. One on the plate. Great presentation with the avocado. And just have a look at it. You just look at that. That is a good home cooked meal right there. Squid ink, weenie then weenie with a side micro green salad. Well, cheers to an awesome day. Full of fish and fun. Let's give it a try. Just look at that contrast between that squid ink. Okay, I gotta get a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Shrimp was made to be eaten with chanterelles. And squid ink linguine was made to be eaten with all the rest of it. Mmm. I have to say, you guys, if you can get your hands on these noodles, they taste really good, but they really do taste just like a noodle in my opinion. But the texture of them is bar none the best noodle I've ever had, so. Definitely try them if you can find them. This has been the first time I've ever found them at this grocery store in a pretty ritzy town. So if you can find them at home, good luck. Give them a try. Now for the salad. I love microgreens. That's not too often you get to eat off off there. That is delicious. Nice and light and fresh. Goes perfect with the meal. Mmm. Well. Once again, we all shared another amazing adventure. I want to see some comments below on whether you guys want to see me come back to Colorado. I'm going to try to plan a trip for about the same time next year and do some more survival style videos and overnight stuff, but I'm glad I got to share this experience with you. So until next time, same time, same place, you all stay fishy, and we'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.